Good morning and a really warm welcome to this online service of Holy Communion. Uh, as you can see, I'm here in church and uh, the great news is that from today, from Sunday the 6th of February, we are back here in church at Holy Trinity for our Sunday worship. It's great to be here, it's great to be home. Uh, I'm standing on the newly constructed balcony and you can probably just make out the glass front of the balcony just behind me. Uh, it feels so good to be back home, so good to be worshipping together again here in this space that we all love and uh, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. As you can see, we are not completely finished yet. There's still a lot of work to be done, a lot of painting and decorating, and the audio-visual system has got to be installed. Lots and lots of different jobs, but the main thing is, from now on, on Sundays, we are back here in church. The, the contractors are gonna continue for another couple of weeks, Monday to Friday, but on Sundays, we're here in church, and we're just gonna have a great time being together again and so if you're able to join us please do so uh, come down to church 9 30 or 11 o'clock on Sundays you will be made most most welcome and you'll be able to see all the changes uh, that have happened to the building over these last five months uh, I do need to share with uh, the church family some some sad news uh, in that over this last week our dear brother Fred Wallace has uh, sadly passed away uh, Fred was a, 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 a much-loved member of this congregation, both on Sundays and on Wednesdays for our, our midweek communion service. He's been a member of this church for a long, long time, and uh, he passed away at home with family uh, uh, earlier this week. And so uh, we, our thoughts and prayers are, are with the family, of course, and once we know details of the funeral service, we will, of course, share them as soon as possible. We're going to begin our worship by singing together a great hymn, a great hymn of praise. All my hope on God is founded. Let's join together as we sing.
And so we say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We move now into a time of penitence as we prepare our hearts to confess our sins and to receive afresh God's forgiveness. And so we are reminded, our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, and on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. This morning's reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the king the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Entitled, Jesus Calls His First Disciples. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gesenaret, the people were crowding round him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. 
Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signalled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Yeah. Uh-huh.
It's really good to be uh, with you today. Let me start with a question. During the course of your life, what have you experienced that you would describe as awesome? Something that made your jaw drop, gasp with amazement, stunned you into silence, maybe moved you to tears? Perhaps being present at the birth of a child. If you were the mum actually in the process of, or the, the moment of giving birth, I acknowledge that awesome may not be the first word that comes to mind, though it may well be as you first saw the child. At the service at St John's Greengates last Sunday afternoon, when our focus was on two of the creation psalms, 19 and 8, Tom used the awesome word as he described reaching the peak of Mount Kilimanjaro, as did Robin and Sue as they spoke about experiencing a total eclipse in America. Or maybe like me, if you haven't had those kind of experiences, a few weeks ago you got a glimpse of the wolf moon. And sometimes when I'm at Scargill House in the Yorkshire Dales, where there's no light pollution, the sight of stars in the night sky, I think is just absolutely awesome. Well, in our Old Testament reading today, the prophet Isaiah is confronted with a truly awesome sight. In fact, the most amazing sight anyone could imagine. God in all his glory. A glimpse of the creator that led him to experience cleansing and then receive a fresh call and commissioning from God. A sight and an experience that changed Isaiah's life and made him not only a much needed prophetic voice in his own generation, but he also became what we might call the messenger for the Messiah, because so many of his words were fulfilled centuries later in the coming person and ministry of Jesus. So as we look at Isaiah chapter 6 now, my prayer is that like Isaiah, we may be freshly awestruck by the glory of God, be reminded of the grace of God, and inspired by his willingness to go with and respond to the call of God. Awesome yet gracious God, as we come face to face with you in these words of Scripture, may we bow before your holiness and be amazed by your grace and goodness. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, it's a time of political upheaval, national insecurity, a leadership crisis. Nobody's quite sure what the future holds. Now, I'm not actually talking about our own country at the present time, though I could be, and this is why scripture is so amazingly relevant in every situation and generation. But those words also describe the situation in Jerusalem around 740 BC. The king, a man called Uzziah, is on his deathbed. His reign is at an end and there's a leadership vacuum in the nation. The neighbouring Assyrian Empire is growing in strength and threatening the country's independence rather like Russia is currently threatening Ukraine. And what's worse, the country is experiencing spiritual decline. The first five chapters of Isaiah describe an incredible amount of social injustice and inequality, and people just going through the motions of religion, their hearts not in it. Now given all this, just as we can feel, somebody like Isaiah could have had every excuse for despair and dismay. What does the future hold for our nation? What does the future hold for those of us who are trying to be faithful to God and his call? Well, as we join the passage today, God gives Isaiah this awesome vision to reassure him that whatever chaos may be happening in Jerusalem, God remains on the throne of the universe. And this isn't some kind of escapism, head in the sand from what was going on, but rather a reminder and restorer of perspective who is really in charge of human history. So Isaiah describes what he sees, the Lord, high, exalted, seated on the throne, the train of his robe filling the temple. You know how on TV we're sometimes given a preview, a, a trailer of a new series, 
and it's there to whet our appetites to watch the programmes. Well, in this remarkable vision, Isaiah is given a kind of sneak preview of the throne room of heaven, and it's no spoiler alert. It's like the sky has been parted, and though King Uzziah may be gone, the king of creation is alive and well. Ultimate power isn't in 10 Downing Street, the White House or the Kremlin. It remains with God and him alone. And I hope this comes as a reassurance to you as it does to me. It would have done for Isaiah and the people of his day. Because at times we may not be able to see or make sense of what is going on around us. But God's ultimate plans for the world can't be frustrated. And we need to go on praying that his will may be done here on earth as it is in heaven. I wonder if you noticed, it's not just God who Isaiah sees in this vision. He's surrounded by heavenly worshippers described as the seraphim. And just as we acknowledge in this and every communion service, therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, they are praising God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Wow, this is awesome. And when we read the word holy in the Bible, referring to God, it means he is utterly unique and perfect, which of course is not true of us. And that's what Isaiah becomes aware of next. Having experienced glimpses of the glory of God and along with the heavenly host responded in worship, he comes now to experience the grace of God as he faces and feels his own unworthiness, his sinfulness, how flawed and imperfect he is. And throughout the Bible, when people come face to face with God, they're often driven to their knees in repentance. Did you notice that happened for Simon Peter in today's Gospel reading? Amazed by the miraculous catch of fish, when before Jesus told them what to do, they'd had a fruitless night fishing. Simon Peter falls on his knees and says, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. And this isn't because Jesus says, Peter, you're a sinful man. Peter is just awed by the Lord's power and perfection, and like Isaiah, feels small and lost by comparison. Over the years, in the context of taking funeral services for people who have not been part of the church community, I've often been made to smile when a relative says of the person who's died, he was such a lovely man. That's great. But then they go on to say, you know, he never did anything wrong. He's not like the people we see on the news who commit these awful crimes. Friends, whether we compare ourselves as being better or worse than other people, that doesn't actually count. It's us compared with God that matters. I love the Father Brown stories. I read them when I was a kid and uh, now sometimes watch them on the television. And the original Father Brown stories uh, were written by G.K. Chesterton, who was himself a a Roman Catholic priest, such as Father Brown is in those uh, books and programmes. And around 100 years ago, the Times newspaper wrote to a range of famous authors and they asked them this question, what's wrong with the world? And lots of them responded with lengthy and erudite answers. But G.K. Chesterton famously responded by simply writing, what's wrong with the world? Dear sir, I am. Yours sincerely, G.K. Chesterton. You see, he got it. He recognised he was a part of the world's problems, however small. He was willing to take personal responsibility. And as we've heard, Isaiah reached the same conclusion. He sees the Lord in all this holiness and perfection. And what is his response? Woe is me. I am ruined. I'm a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips. And yet, and yet, I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Thankfully, our God is a God of grace as well as a God of glory. And as evangelist J. John is fond of saying, Jesus didn't come to rub it in, he came to rub it out. And for Isaiah, the message of grace comes through one of the angels. One of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. And what's significant about that message is that it came at a price. It was free for Isaiah. But where did the coal come from, the altar? The altar was the place of sacrifice in the temple, where an animal would die in place of human sinners. And I hope you realise, in the coming of Jesus, that the same applies. Our only hope of God's forgiveness and a living relationship with him has been possible, made possible 
through Jesus' death on the cross. A free gift to us, but costly for him. Now finally, having experienced God's glory and grace, Isaiah is immediately and surprisingly no doubt to him, given a fresh call and commissioning for God's service. As he tells us in verse 8, I heard the Lord saying to me, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. As we've heard in our Gospel reading, the same happened for Simon Peter. Jesus said, Don't be afraid, from now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything, and followed him. And for both Isaiah and Peter, it would prove to be immensely costly to make themselves available in that way. But they didn't want to miss out on being obedient to God and being part of his adventure. So what about you and me? After a number of months of meeting in other locations, it's wonderful to be returning to our church building this weekend with its fantastic new balcony and the other building work that's been completed. But as we do so, it's important that we remember why this work has been done. It's part of the vision that Holy Trinity has to continue to grow in numbers and depth, to reach out and serve the community, to be a place of welcome and hospitality, friendship and forgiveness, with God at the centre of it all. And for all this to be possible, I believe it's going to need each one of us to say like Isaiah, here am I, send me, use me, to make ourselves freshly available. And I think perhaps God is giving an opportunity for some of us to renew a commitment to worship and service that perhaps we were engaged in before the pandemic and maybe before the church building was closed. For others, I sense there's something new on the horizon, whatever it may be. And that may include some of you have joined Holy Trinity just in recent months. But whatever the case, I believe for all of us, for such a time as this, it's an opportunity to say, Lord, here I am, to be ready to, along with others, but also individually, launch out into the deep, let down our nets and see something of what God is going to do in the future, being part of that next phase of God's adventure for us as individuals and as church. So my friends, are you, am I, up for this? Lord, may we, like Isaiah, catch fresh glimpses of your glory. May we afresh experience the grace of your love and forgiveness. And may we hear, accept and live out whatever fresh call you may be giving us to the praise and glory of your name. Amen. Father God, we come before you in awe and wonder, recognising that all things come from you and that all that we are, all that we can be, is made perfect only by the giving of ourselves over to you in love and in service. We pray then today that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come and bless us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. May all who hold positions of authority internationally, nationally and locally be blessed with such wisdom that they seek to understand your will for all your people. Lord, come and bless us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit Increase in us the confidence of your love wherever and whenever you call us that we might learn to love one another in that peace. Lord, come and bless us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division, sickness and sorrow in the world, our nation, our community and in our family. Lord, 
come and bless us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for all the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We know that you will equip us for the work which you have given us. And so we ask that we recognize our individual gifts and that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we might use them in your service. Lord, come and bless us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus, that we might through our lives introduce your love to those whom we meet. Lord, come and bless us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit given by the risen Lord. We ask you to keep the whole church, both living and departed, in the joy of eternal life. Lord, come and bless us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. And on this accession day, the 70th anniversary of Queen Elizabeth II taking the throne, we give special thanks for the example she has given to us in her life as a committed Christian, in her role as our head of state and supreme governor of the Church of England. Just as she pledged her life in your service, may we, in the strength of your Holy Spirit, follow her example and live our lives in service to you. Lord, come and bless us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Generous God, we have read how you sent your Holy Spirit upon your Son at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. That same Spirit now rests upon us all. Merciful Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. We come now to the lovely part of our service where we share the peace with one another. And so uh, perhaps you'd like to join me in standing uh, wherever you are. Perhaps you're in your own living room or, or, or kitchen or dining room, wherever you are. Perhaps you'd just like to stand as we share with one another a sign of Christ's peace and remind ourselves that we are part of the body of Christ, brothers and sisters together. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's share with one another a sign, a symbol of Christ's peace. Peace of the Lord. i
The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son Jesus Christ to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his commands, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us. Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, Jesus had supper with his friends and taking bread, he gave it to them. He took the bread, he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. Jesus, my Saviour. My Jesus, my Saviour, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty
And so having shared together in this holy way, this sharing of bread and wine, let's also share together as we say our prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for this service of Holy Communion. I hope that you have enjoyed the service. I hope that you have felt uh, drawn closer to God and one another as we have shared uh, communion and worship in this way. Uh, just a reminder, as I said at the beginning of the service, we are now back in our church building. And so you would be very, very uh, welcome to join us at 9.30 or 11 o'clock on Sundays from now on. We're back home and it feels just great. And uh, over the next couple of weeks, you will uh, see this space even more transformed when, once all the jobs uh, are finished uh, here in the building. Uh, also, just to say a, a, a note for your diaries, uh, although we're back in the building, uh, this is what you might call a, a soft, a soft uh, uh, return to church. Uh, we are having a, an official, formal celebration of the building project and our return to church on the weekend of the 12th and 13th of March. And there'll be a whole series of events and services that weekend as we celebrate coming back in the building and uh, hopefully all the jobs uh, will have been finished by then and it's just going to look absolutely spectacular. So uh, you'll be hearing more about that in due course but just make a note in your diaries the weekend of the 12th and 13th of March there's going to be uh, lots of celebrations going on here at Holy Trinity and you would be most welcome. And so let's uh, finish our service by hearing God's blessing and uh, going about the rest of our day and the rest of this week uh, with his presence with us. And so as we draw our service to a close, we go with God's peace and God's blessing in our hearts. Again, perhaps you'd like to stand as we uh, bring this service to a conclusion. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and all those who you love and care for, now and always. Amen. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>